The National Government of the United Kingdom contacts the Central Bank, the Bank of England, and requests, say, £1 billion. Firstly, the Bank of England has a private money supply, and this private money supply does not belong to the UK's national money supply in circulation. However, the actual problem is this private money supply owned by the Bank of England can essentially be created out of nothing. However, money within retail banks, such as Halifax, NatWest, Lloyds TSB, Barclays and HSBC, their money does indeed belong to the national money supply. Now, to increase the money in British circulation, the Bank of England then lowers interest rates on their loans. These loans are from the same private fake money supply. These loans are only offered to other banks. For example, lowering interest rates from 1.5% to 1%. This encourages more borrowing from the retail banks. Once these retail banks take out more low interest loans offered by the Bank of England, the new money in possession of these retail banks becomes a legal tender, thus increases the UK's national money supply. The retail banks then loan out their borrowed money to the people, charging higher interest rates such as mortgages at 5% APR, personal loans at 10% APR, credit cards at 20% APR, and so forth. And with all this interest generated from multiple levels of loans, the banks profit and the people suffer. However, this is just a generalisation. In reality, the transaction would occur electronically, with no paper used at all. In fact, only 3% of the total money supply is actually physical. The remaining 97% essentially exists in computers alone. So, as we originally stated, £1 billion was requested into the UK's money supply, which is in the form of loans to retail banks. Now here is where it gets interesting. Based on the fractional reserve practice, all deposits become part of the retail bank's reserve. Regarding national legal reserve requirements, the UK must keep 3.1% of all deposits as a reserve. For this example, let's assume the Bank of England loaned 1 billion only to Barclays Bank. This means that the deposited 1 billion, 3.1% of which, 31 million, is the required reserve, while the other 96.9% 969 million is an excessive reserve which can be used as a basis of new loans. Now, it is logical to assume that the 969 million is coming out of the original 1 billion deposit. However, this is not actually the case. What actually happens is, this 969 million is literally being created from nothing on top of the original 1 billion expanding the money supply to 1.9 billion. Now, let's assume some rich businessman wants to borrow 969 million pounds. Once the bank accepts and gives out the loan, the person then has to deposit his newly received money into a bank, and the recycle repeats all over again. 3.1% is isolated, 30 million as the reserve, and 939 million is now available for new loans. Then to 910 million, and then to 882 million, and so forth. This deposit loan money creation cycle can technically go to infinity. However, keeping it mathematically simple, 
From the original £1 billion deposit, £32.3 billion can be created. However, the biggest problem with the system is, where does the value of this newly created money come from? It literally steals it and devalues the old money. This is why the British currency drops over time and the British pound weakens. <laughs>